Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today, we're talking about the NAD. It's a little amp. 3045, I believe. Yes, the D. 3045. So, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about this little NAD vertical amp. Big thank you to Drew. He is one of my patrons. He sent this out, the NAD D3045, a while ago for review. And he's been kind enough to not say, where is my amplifier? It's right here. He's been very patient with me. The D3045 from NAD is a DAC. So it's an integrated amplifier with a DAC, which sells for currently $900, kind of expensive. So the question is, is this a good value? Well, we're gonna find out. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We have over 470 videos. Amps, DACs, turntables, headphones, headphone amplifier, a whole bunch of stuff. Like the video too. You can always take your like away. 3045. Uh, first gripe about this amplifier is Talk about showing fingerprints. Usually like glossy things like this show fingerprints. But check this out. All this up here, I just wiped off, but watch this. And my finger is not that greasy. I mean, I'm sure my fingers are greasier than most, but check it out, all right? The amount of fingerprints on this thing is truly remarkable. I've never seen something show fingerprints as, as badly as this. Now, does this affect sonic performances? Of course not. And the irony is it's not even the really mirrory part. If I put a finger down, like you can kind of see something, but like just from where I was holding this, look at that. Yeesh. I know it's probably not a design consideration when they're making an amplifier as to whether or not it shows fingerprints, but my oh my. Keep a rag on hand if you end up buying this thing. The styling, the design, how it looks is a little bit, well, a lot different than most amps. So on the top and the front, there is a very highly reflective, almost mirror-like plastic thing that goes over it. And then right here, there is the display. Obviously, this is not plugged in, but I will show you pictures of what the display looks like. Two knobs. Kind of, this kind of looks like one of the minions. You know, those little yellow guys with their, their Cyclops like goggles on? My kids would probably get a kick out of that. The knob down here is for the input selection. The knob up here is for volume. This is a very plasticky construction. Plastic sides, plastic on top, plastic knobs. Little ventilation things here. However, it does have this really cool blue writing. So the looks on this are gonna be love it or hate it. The construction is going to be love it or hate it. But when I started playing with this, something bing in my head, this reminds me of something. And it reminds me of the SVS sound base, which is equally as dirty. I'm trying to see if this one gets fingerprints like the other one. Well, there's some fingerprints there, but it's not quite as bad. This, the NAD D3045, is a very similar to the point where I'm starting to get a bit curious. The NAD does say made in China. SVS looks like it's made in the PRC, which I'm assuming is the People's of Republic of China. Designed in and engineered in SVS, Ohio. Here's the interesting thing. The back of this one says, designed and engineered in Canada. Okay, let's take a look. What's on the back? On the back, from left to right, phono stage. So we have the ground screw right there with the moving magnet phono input right there. Underneath that, optical one for your DAC. Next to that, optical two for your deck. Above that, coaxial input. Above that, 3.5 millimeter input. Next to that, line two. So 
two analog inputs and a phono preamp, okay? So that is three inputs. One, two, three digital inputs and one USB digital input and an HDMI arc input. And then there's a 12 volt trigger input and then you got your speaker binding posts and then an IEC power connection, okay? Just out of curiosity, just for fun, let's take a look at the back of the SVS sound base. At one point, I forgot which one I was holding because the backs of these look so similar. The design cues, while different, the construction is very similar. They both have plastic housings. They both have this ventilation kind of look. They both have identical binding posts on the back. They're different colors, but they are identical. They both have offset binding posts. If I'm a betting man, I am willing, and the font looks almost identical. If I'm a betting man, I'm thinking these things are coming out of the same building. I could be completely wrong, but I've handled a few amps at this point. And the fact that these are nearly the same size, the fact that they have identical binding posts, the font's the same, they're both made out of plastic, they're both class D amps. Awful similar. Here's a big difference though. The SVS, this one, this one's going away, but this one used to retail for $500. This one for $900. Now, the NAD has a lot more inputs. Okay, that's fine. SVS doesn't have a phono stage, has a streamer. <clears throat> if you can call it a streamer, this one does not. Even the line, the seam down the side is so, it's got a similar vibe to the SVS. On the top there is the power button and it is a touch control but is it really a button i don't know you put your finger on top and you hold it there and it turns it on or it turns it off i hate that i hate it i hate all touch controls that doesn't have any type of haptic feedback or an actual button to depress because I don't know if I'm doing it correctly until I see the light change. Like, am I pu should I push it harder or whatever? So I, I, I don't like that. Now, I'm not blaming NAD because there's a whole bunch of companies that have non-depressible type of buttons, but I don't know, on a $900 unit, it just, it doesn't fill me with confidence. I want a button, push the button or whatever. Number, the second thing, I do not like is this remote control really on a $900 product we are getting one of these tiny credit card size 80s 90s early 2000 well probably not 80s early 2000s style of a flat what is this CR25 yes yeah, CR2025 which to be fair is at least somewhat of a common flat battery type you probably can get it at a gas station maybe maybe but nobody has these laying around in their couch where if this was a double a triple a you could probably go foraging for this thing in your junk drawer or in your couch cushions and be able to in a pinch get this thing up and running battery choices aside fine it has to be little and I had an Anthem integrated 225, which was an older amp. It still worked though. I was about ready to approve it. Um, anyway, it had a similar remote control. If it works, it's fine. But I mean, just look at this thing. I hate, I, I hate to make fun of this, but even on a really cheap, even on a cheap Chinese product, you get a better remote control. I mean, even the, the green button is super, this feels, I'm sorry, this is going to be, I feel like I'm being super negative. This feels like the type of remote that you would get with an LED light setup that, you know, you put in your kid's room. This is the remote control. That's what it feels like. Okay. Maybe I'm coming off a bit hot with the remote control, but 
one of the overarching themes of this review is going to be the price tag on this at $900. And to me, if you're selling something for $900 that has this type of form factor with an HDMI on the back, that probably means this is gonna go up somewhere, maybe next to your television, right? It has a bass boost, but no tone controls and no balance control, but it has a high pass filter, three different levels, 120 hertz, 80 and 40, which means you can kind of do bass management with the NAD D3045. Now there's no subwoofer out. There is preamp outs, which means if you have a subwoofer, make sure that it has preamp inputs. Otherwise you're only gonna get one channel of bass information for your subwoofer. This also has Bluetooth. Also has an MQA DAC, which is rated at 24 up to 386 kilohertz. So it should handle all of the music that you have. I think it does DSD too, but I don't listen to DSD. Frankly, I don't know many people that do listen to DSD. I know someone will be in the comments saying, I listen to DSD. It's awesome. And that's great. I've just talked to many people and not many listen to DSD. But all DACs do DSD. Okay. I'm going on a bit of a bird walk here. I'm, I apologize. From memory, and only memory because I no longer have it, this sounds identical to the, the NADC338, which is a two channel integrated amplifier. I think it has Chromecast. You can Chromecast to it. I think that was $700. So this at $900 has way more features, but it doesn't have, doesn't have a streaming solution. This is a little bit steely, not steely Dan, steely on top. Uh, kind of harsh, percussion, snare drum hits, some vocals up top, cymbals sound metallic. This amplifier doesn't sound thin because there is body on the bottom end, but it just sounds a little bit unnatural on the top end especially with percussive instruments, drums, cymbals, stuff like that. With the bass boost on, I felt like it was too heavy handed. I thought it was too boomy and covered up and even veiled some of the mid range. I think that's gonna be dependent on the speakers and the room maybe, but I had the same takeaway from the C338 because there was no loudness button. There was no tone controls. There was only a bass boost. I think the bass boost sounds exactly like I remember it sounding on the C338. It's just too much. If it was just, a, just pulled back just a little bit, or if there was actual tone controls, I think you could dial in this amp, at, le at least to my liking, as it is, Without a bass boost, it's a little bit tilted towards the top end. At lower volumes, with the bass boost, it's okay. At a little bit higher volumes, it's a little bit wonky. A little bit wonky. So what are my final thoughts? As a whole, looking at this for what it is really meant to do, which is to be an all-in-one solution, maybe on a desktop, maybe next to a television. I think it does what it's supposed to do. And frankly, it kind of does things that no other amplifier out there will do in this same form factor. But I don't get this product. I don't get it because it's $900. I don't get it because it has a remote control like this. I don't get it because I feel like this is kind of a stopgap measure. It feels like nobody wants to have an AVR receiver, but they want eARC. So that's kind of the, been the new thing with two channel. If you have eARC, then it's great. Like some powered speakers have eARC now. Some of the higher end streaming amplifiers like the Blue Sound OS, which frankly is only a little bit more than this. And it's the same family of companies. So I would actually steer you towards the Blue Sound power node rather than this because I think the blue sound does everything that this thing can do, but also as a streamer, also has high pass filtering, sub out. I think that's probably the way to go. 
Although I don't think the blue sound, I don't think the power node has a phono input. Anyway, it just seems like these amps almost are perfect because if this had a blue sound streamer in it at this price, I don't think I'd have any issue with recommending it. As it is though, it does not have a streamer in it. So $900 is a lot. Yes, you have a fully functioning DAC. Yes, you have MQA if you're interested in that. But some of the feature set doesn't make sense to me because you have what seems to be like a desktop amplifier, but it also has a phono input. Or this is kind of like a hideaway amplifier next to your TV if you don't have a lot of room, an apartment or second room or some bedroom or something like that. But then you have room for a turntable. I'm glad it has a phono preamp. But for me, it's not small enough that you couldn't just get a slimline receiver like a Marantz NR1711 at about the same price. Actually, I paid much less for my Marantz. Now, it's gone up in price. I paid much less for the NR1711 than what this costs. And that's a good sounding receiver for music. I think it sounds better than the NAD D3045. You have room correction. One has tone controls, one has a pure direct mode, one has fully functioning EQ, Dolby Atmos surround, a streamer, a Heos streamer. It's not great, but it's still a streamer, a phono stage. And guess what I've done before with that? I've turned it vertical and it doesn't take up much more room than what this does vertical. I kind of understand what they're trying to do here and I applaud them for that, but I think it needs to be less expensive because at $900, for my money, I'm buying a Slimline Marantz. That sounds better already for music. And then you have all the other functionality and a little bit of room correction. There's no denying that this is a very convenient product. How much of a premium one is willing to pay for that convenience is gonna be fundamentally up to you. So for me, this would be a pass, um, a pass. Not saying it's not good. It just seems like it's kind of, it seems like it has a bit of a identity crisis. It doesn't know if it's supposed to be a small desktop amplifier. It doesn't know if it's supposed to be a home theater receiver. It's just kind of hanging out in no man's land. And it's not small enough to kind of do what I think it's trying to do, okay? So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap man. Every Sunday night, we have patron only Zooms. We also have a patron only Discord group. We also have a patron only Facebook group. We also do patron giveaways. You can also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal Music. Links in the description. If you click and you sign up for a trial, even if you quit, I get a couple of dollars. You can also use the affiliate links in the description. If you click and you buy through those links, I will get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. So it's a great way to support the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your new NADD3045 and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.